All right, guys, so in this video, we're checking out the uh, iFlight Success on one flight controller. This one is was something that was requested a while back, and I apologize to the viewer that was asking for this. I was waiting to do a PID tuning video on uh, where this thing came from. This is the uh, Titan DC2. I recently did a Betaflight 4.2 PID tuning video on that. And I wanted to do that video first because I was going to uh, take tear this down apart. And obviously I can't do that tuning video if I tear it down. So I've done that video. I'll link that up in the corner, put a card in the corner and uh, the link in the description if you guys want to check out the PID tune on 4.2 for the Titan DC2. But this is the board that came out of that quad. And basically I, f I feel like this was just uh, overall too heavy with um, the air unit in here and, it, and basically um, two and a half inch props with no prop guards. So I'm gonna be using these parts in something else. I'll show you that a little bit later in the video. But let's just talk about the uh, flight controller here first. So this is a 30 by 30 board with M3 holes. As you can see there, I have still have the screws in and everything. And it's got grommets for mounting. Um, but this is a flight controller plus a 40 amp 32 bit ESC all in one. Uh, the the ECs are uh, BLL32 and they are 40 amps bursting to 50 amps max. So this something like this is actually going to be I think better for a five inch and I'll show you which I'm going to put, put that in later so stay tuned for the uh, end of the video for that. That'll be interesting. This board is really um, specialized for DJI builds and so it's got a five volt two and a half uh, amp regulator and a 10 volt two amp regulator on board. And most of the connections are gonna be through here, which goes straight to your air unit, just plugs right in. And you can see all the wires that come out of there for this plug. And the Titan does come with other plugs here. And I'm, I'm not sure if this flight control, if you buy it separately, comes with all these plugs. I think they do. Because uh, this one obviously is just for the air unit, but if you have like other receivers, for example, like Crossfire, then you'll need these other plugs because um, this the yellow white hair is S bus. I think that's um, R2 or R1. I forget one of the UARTs for S bus. I think it's R2. And then T2 is right next to it, plus five volts out. So I think if you want Crossfire or something like that, you'll have to you'll need those other two wires. I think that's one of these other two plugs here, for example. You need, you'll need that. And then your other UARTs like um, uh, I think five and six are over here on these pads and then the 3.3 volts on this here. I'll put up wire di wiring diagrams for this one as well as this one here. And uh, they, obviously on the uh, product page is a link to the wiring diagrams in the manual as well. But in any event, there's five total UARTs on the board. It, even though it's just an F4, it's an F4 or five chip. Um, one of them is for EC telemetry, and then you have two that come out of this plug over here. I think it's uh, UARTs one and two, and I think um, five, uh, four and six are on this side over here. And I think one of them, I think UART three is actually for EC telemetry. And the rest of the board is not a whole lot of solder pads. Um, you have pads there uh, for your buzzer. Let's see there, B plus, B minus, and you got your bootloader button there. This one has a USB type C connector, which is nice. And you have a shunt there for your current sensor for your ESC telemetry. Now, this one came with the XT30, obviously for the micro, two and a half inch micro. For five inch, you're gonna to want to take all this off stuff off here. I'm not sure if the retail one comes with an XT60 connector or not, it probably does. And then this little, uh, the capacitor here is going to be way too small for a five inch so you're going to probably want to pick up a 35 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor that's going to that's what i'll be using i'll be taking this off um, in terms of the rest of the stuff on this board there's black box on here somewhere and it's only eight megabytes it's not very big so maybe one or two flights um, this has an f4 or five chips so you can do a higher uh, pid loop on this one versus the f411 and one thing you probably have noticed and maybe have noticed is that there's no um, Betaflight OSD chip on the board anymore. So nothing over there. And you can see no Betaflight OSD chip here either. 
However, it does support the OSD pass-through feature for DJI. So if you set up the um, Betaflight OSD in the configurator, it will still show up as a custom OSD on the DJI goggles. It's just that if, if you want to use this for analog, uh, you won't have any Betaflight OSD. In fact, I don't recommend using this for analog. This, this board is designed for using with the DJI Air Unit. Now, you can use this with Vista. So you just have to basically use this connector instead of you know, plugging it into the air unit. You cut off the connector at the end here, and then you just solder the wires to the Vista unit. And uh, the wire, all the connections are corresponding. They, they match up. And obviously 10 volts is totally fine for Vista. Vista can handle even a higher voltage range than the air unit itself. So if you want to use this with Vista, you can do that. You just have to do a little more work and just not use the connector here. You have to cut off the ends here and then solder directly to a Vista unit. So if you guys are wondering where you're supposed to solder your motor wires, they're kind of hidden here in the corners. And you can see here, three on the side and also on the underside as well. So it's a very clean uh, setup here. Obviously you want your board layout like this. You have your arrow there, that'll be the front of the quad. And uh, if you want to, um, basically if you want to put this in like a low profile build or maybe you don't have a lot of stack height clearance on your particular on your frame then something like this is one oh you definitely want to definitely check this one out so the five inch frame that i'm going to put this in is this guy and this is like a really cheap uh pin good special is like 25 dollars uh, but one of the things you notice here is not a lot of clearance for your stack so this board here is going to be perfect for that and I think this one will take 20 by 20s or 30 by 30s, but it's about 10 millimeters or 11 millimeters of stack clearance here. So you could, in theory, fit two boards if you're very careful um, up, you know, below the air unit. I'm going to actually use this one instead. And that will mount perfectly. I'm going to plug in the air unit. I just put, put the air unit up here and everything will work out just fine. Now this one has a 20 by 20 mounting in the back here. So you could put a Vista back here, for example, and then put your stack here uh, for a, a potential different kind of build if you want. Um, this is sort of like a dead cat you know, frame, so you have uh, basically no props in your video. And then one thing to note about this, I'll talk about this in the, in the build video for this, is that the, the distance here is for a full-size analog camera, so not a, not a 20 millimeter camera, so you have to, you're gonna need some sort of 3D printed adapter for that, I'll talk about that in a future video. This is the frame that I'm going to put the uh, build uh, these parts into. So this basically transfer from the D the DC2. You know, this is basically the flight controller and the air unit. And you have a pretty functional five inch, and obviously you have to mount some motors and solder them on. That's you know, pretty simple build. So I'll have that in a separate video. So um, well, stay tuned for that. Be subscribed. That'll be coming out probably in I think about two to three weeks. I think that's where my timing is on this video. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you're looking for a 30 by 30 board all in one for a low profile build, uh, you definitely want to check this one out. Obviously, up to 40 amps. It's probably going to be good for most builds. Uh, it depends on how aggressive a pitch or prop you use and battery. This does go up to 6S, um, but you're probably going to need an even more capacitor for that. I mean, multiple capacitors for 6S. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it really depends on how heavy your build is and how much current draw that build is going to have, whether or not the 50 amp burst is going to be enough for you. Uh, if you're building uh, this on a low profile build, obviously with a single board, you're Build's probably going to be lighter, so I would say anything up to, um, yeah, even a you know light 2306 motor should be fine. If you go into a bigger motor, then you probably don't want to use this board. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.